Hey guys, welcome to What the Flick, our discussion now of The Strain, season one, episode one. Uh, I need to talk about the writing of this program, because they're not even uh -huh. trying. It's, it's, not, it's pretty bad. Not even, not even making clunky. it. I'm you sorry. A little the, the, clunky. Okay, the, it's a little the, clunky. I like it. The, the, the hero is named Goodweather, and the bad the bad company is called Stoneheart. Yeah. Okay, now Stoneheart is ridiculous. That is some battlefield Evil Earth Incorporated shit right was there. taken, I mean, so they went with Stoneheart. Uh, no, but here's the thing. It, and it's also, clunky. also yes. the, 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 the rumor gets bad odds because these guys are already knocking the like. And, the, and, and, the, and the, two lead, buddy. the two lead you scientists are named Nora Ephraim. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought that was funny, but okay. F, F, come on. And then, the, the literally, the first words we hear, we hear spoken not by the narrator about the nature of man or whatever. Hunger versus Hunger, love. Thank you. We want to thank you for flying Regis Air and encourage that you ask us any connecting gate information. Like, was it written by ABBA? <laughs> like, like it's pretty basic to get the things that pilots say <laughs> when you're on a plane. Even ABBA doesn't understand <laughs> yeah, these things. So like, that's it, the it was first written thing on the Babblefish program. Right. 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 Right Airplane, and then like the the ones the male steward uh, calls the uh, stewardess. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the one flight, flight attendant, attendant, flight attendant flight calls the other <laughs> flight Welcome attendant. To the 21st and she says on an airplane, right? Yeah. I need you up here right now. It's an emergency right now. And she's like, we're landing. And he's like, no, right now, right now, right now. And I'm she not sort even... of takes her time. And then down she there. like saunters down. She's like, Talks you're gonna to the French you're kid. gonna need to put your seat up. <laughs> 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 you know. And then like you're gonna Safety need to stop course. playing your music. They don't even tell you that. It's just right off the bat. Turn off your devices. It wasn't, a, it, right, it's just, it was so, like, run to the front of the plane. That's what everyone would do. And, then, and then the next thing is the Corey Stoll in awful man wig as like, oh, snappy dead an beat, awful man snappy wig. deadbeat dad like thing. And and it, I'm like, is, am I watching airport? Like yeah, this so, is the Burton okay. Lancaster Hang conundrum on. of, I spend too much time at work and my wife feels neglected. I want to assure our, our, our audience that there is more to this show than yes. the first three minutes yes. on the airplane. Okay. Well, but I will say this, I agree that the, the lot of this episode is extremely clunkily written, mm -hmm. but it's also efficient. They have a lot of characters introduced, they have a lot they of do. plot to get yeah. to, yeah. and so they have sacrificed any sort of believability for just getting it done. Yeah. Getting it out there, this is, a lot of pilot episodes run into this problem, they just have to introduce the story and it takes forever sometimes. So they're trying to be as fast as possible. This is already almost a double length episode too. It, yeah, it's extra long. Yeah. Look, yeah. The, just because I started off with this, like by the end of saying, oh my God, I'm gonna hate this, I'm gonna hate this, and then by the end I was like, ooh. Oh, like yeah. I, I was into it. Like yeah. I got into it. I, 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 I find the I show totally very, very, very fun. This reminds me of the opening episode of like a eight, uh, like a four-part Stephen King miniseries from the early '90s, <laughs> where there's just a lot of characters. They all have a really obvious plot point. Oh, that guy was in the Holocaust. Well, now we know everything about him. Oh, that guy's a deadbeat dad and a former alcoholic. Now we know everything about him. Right. Mm -hmm. All of these things. Oh, that guy is uh, is Hispanic and has trouble with the law and is trying to get his mom out of immigration problems. Well, now we know everything about him. <laughs> it's not complicated, but we get it and now. We we can move on. Yeah. But so it, yeah, um, it, but it looks a lot better than no Stephen King miniseries. This is a gorgeous looking show. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. If, it's, if Guillermo del Toro directs it, you know they're just going to throw orange everywhere, which is great. <laughs> oh my God. They're all dead. I'm into this show enough that I want to see where it goes. And once we got all the character crap out of the way and all the sort of like, once characters. Well, no, I'm just, I'm saying crap because it's, they're badly yeah, handled I characters. Yeah. I've normally I love character crap, but uh, <laughs> once they get those sort of the preliminary stuff out of the way and and the chase is on and it's you know vampires in your city, then I, I want to see where that goes. But boy, to get there, we had to wade through. Does it not bug anybody else? You guys are more horror guys yeah. than I am. But when you see a movie or TV show where clearly not only have vampires never existed in this world or, or to the people know about it, but vampire movies never existed. Like it never occurs to anyone, hmm, a coffin full of dirt. Whatever could that be about? I think someone would say, oh, it's kind of like a vampire thing and then move on because they're rational scientists. Yeah, because of course that would never be. But, but no, they don't even have that. that you know. It's a little sword because if we did have a character that did do that, then we go, oh, it's too meta, too on the nose. Everybody yeah. knows it, everything. It's always so a it's thin line. Like, it's always like, a yeah. thin line. Like, it happens in all the Romero movies now as well. I just, I and like, like there's zombies, let it go. Ahead of these people. Sure. Like they, not a couple movies they, they've done that, but it's usually funny. Yeah. yeah, 
True. You know, it's like very it, it's all Jamie Kennedy and right. Scream. But I think right. it's right. vague. I think with this show, it's getting vague enough that you don't need that kind of stuff. It's like that 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 was a big closet that just showed up. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, it doesn't just it look doesn't, like a coffin. Yeah. It's actually like a. It looks like the monolith from 2001 should be in there, yeah. but it's and, and it's covered as scary stuff. Listen, I mean, like so the show is a little different. Yeah, the show is really simple. I was telling, yeah. you know, I was saying earlier that. It fills a void that us horror fans don't have. I mean, you know, American Horror Story, they're doing their crazy arcs and they're crazy all over the, you know, over all over the place plot points. And then you've got other shows that are so complicated. We need something just simple. We need a cool well, creature that's feature. What, that's and that's what, what The Walking this, Dead was once. It was once, yeah. Now but now it's they're just, just over dramatic, yeah. And here there's enough spinning plates yeah. that it feels like if they're they're not gonna get as boring real fast. Yes. And I like what they're doing. I like Guillermo del Toro said this a lot of times, he said it when he did Blade Two, that he's it bums him out that vampires aren't scary anymore. Yeah. Mm. Which is why he gave, you know, his his yeah. Reaper's vagina faces in yeah. Blade Two. Which and are now kind of like sisters to this one. It, they are yeah. a little bit like yeah. this is actually like a really creepy once you actually see some of the vampire stuff. Yeah. I like that it has it's actually like parasitic worms, yeah, which really is right. actually like those are real, which is why that skeeves me out so hard. <laughs> like that all that stuff is really really creepy. Like, I love about New York's bed bug infestation. Right? <laughs> all that stuff. He, he found a good way to take vampires and yeah, okay, it's a clunky way to start it. Yeah. Fine, not arguing that. But like, once we see the vampire stuff, once it's actually just like looking into the science of what has happened to these people's bodies, it's really creepy. And I ultimately, that's more important in a horror story than character or plot. What matters in a, in horror is that it affects you on a gut level. Even just looking at the posters of this, we were talking about Ugh. scared the crap out of some people. That's effective horror. I'm willing to make a few sacrifices for some lame dialogue. Yeah, just like, but some of the it, it, yeah, and the frustration for me is that. It, the the lame dialogue wasn't necessary. It wasn't. It wasn't a time for sophisticated dialogue. It's so easy to have gotten right and made a little less clunky, sure. you know. But whatever. I. Why did the main vampire or the the master? The, the master uh, was it just a pettiness that he uh, crushed the guy's skull? I think <laughs> like, Andrew Dyboff is a little too famous to keep on the show for long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, you no. can't get Wishmaster on there for a song. You're going to have to spend a lot of money well, you getting have, Andrew In Dyboff. this case, you have uh, Lance Henriksen who lent the voice of the master yeah. versus Andrew Dyboff, so that's a cool little genre <laughs> mashup. But no, yeah. it was just a nice little touch. It was just a nice yeah, added. I'm not going to just suck you dry. I'm going to smash your oh, effing I'm going I'm I'm to suck you dry. I'm going to break your neck and yes, kill you yeah. then, yeah. then you're down. Yeah. And, and by the way, age you or whatever he did to him too. Like yeah, he, 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 he psyched the guy. Him, so, yeah. so I mean, he's dead already, then he breaks his neck, then he throws him down, and then he crushes his skull 30 times to where there's no head left, <laughs> but the body, Still twitching. I know, that's <laughs> so much fun. Yeah. That's now, so much fun. Do we think that Sean Astin is doomed to die for being a oh, Quisling in this? Uh, Absolutely. Eventually, yeah. yeah. They're gonna keep, there's, a, there's always that character in a horror movie who you know is doomed to die either because he got everyone killed. The Burke from, the Burke from Aliens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And But the thing is, is that you keep them around as long as possible because you know that person's going to die. The question is when. Yeah. So I, w I, just, I would be surprised if he makes it out of the first season, but I don't think he's going to get killed right away because he also knows information. They're going to have mm. to get... He's there their, their connection to Stoneheart. I feel better <laughs> if uh, I feel better if the CDC had a couple of uh, fifty-three-year-old white-haired scientists. <laughs> <laughs> like the CDC wasn't everybody. Every it's movie ever. Dashing. Oh it's my God! Hot. They're so hot, smoking. <laughs> so hot. But also, the female scientists at the CDC have great asses. <laughs> and F drinks milk. What's with the milk yeah. gag? I know, I kept waiting for that to be a pig off. Where's my milk? He yeah. worked at the CDC, he believes in doing a body good. Well, if he works for the CDC, he should know that adult males shouldn't be drinking milk now. You know, it's not <laughs> well, good for you. It well, we're evolving anything. into it. Some people are lactose tolerant. <laughs> it's, it's, his, it's his smoking. It's his smoking, yeah. 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 Okay. And he's yeah. like, and he's not drinking anymore, so it's probably what replaced drinking uh, for him. There you go, because uh, that always yeah. works. Yeah. And then again, the Stephen King thing is always going to be an alcoholic. And he's still kind of like, he's still kind of a kid, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, did you notice that the uh, the little girl who comes back at the end, she is the little girl in Mama, ah. uh, which oh. Guillermo del Toro produced. So he's yeah. like kind of pulling in some of his actors. Yeah. That's kind of fun. But do you guys, I want to hear your theories on this. Why when does the Jaggers come in? Guillermo <laughs> get Jaegers. Jaegers, sorry. Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Jaegers sorry. Why does Guillermo <laughs> get humanity and characters right when he does Spanish language stuff, yet when he does English language stuff, it's so broadly when done. When he's asked to do English language stuff, he's not asked to make a subtle drama with horror elements. He's asked to do big 
genre material, and I think it's his idea of what big genre material is, mm. is that it can be fun, is yeah. that it can be goofy. We have this tendency now to look at every kind of genre material, stuff that we would have thought was literally just for kids decades ago, and now we have to take it dead seriously. Yeah. And sometimes it works great. Like Chris Nolan's Dark, Dark, uh, Dark Knight movies, they're, they're awesome. And sometimes it's like, you know, Superman can be fun. Yeah. So I think that's when, when Guillermo del Toro was making what is more of an entertainment than something that you're really supposed to yeah. really touch the core of your soul. I can't believe you didn't I, say sink your teeth into. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy that. I'll, I'll just let you enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think he, he, he thinks it can be broad and entertaining. Yeah. And I think I that, that like, I, yeah. I enjoy that. It's refreshing after way too many dour films about goofy ideas. Sure, I would just like to see him actually bring some of that sensibility from the Spanish language stuff to uh, to America, you know, I mean, because yeah. he does it every time. There's always something a little goofy, a little off, a little too broad for my taste. Because it's like maybe the problem's your taste, Ryan. Maybe. Well, or yeah. maybe it's not the language barrier as much as like the, he's got his indie hat on and he's got yeah. his mass audience yeah, global appeal hat. Yeah. 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 Something different because this does feel there are moments in this when whenever anyone is just talking, mm -hmm. or even the way they dismiss the Armenian vampire hunter, yeah, holocaust so victim. Yeah. You know, like, that feels like a Fox show that's gonna go five episodes before it's canceled. <laughs> like all those scenes, like you've seen this show before yeah. and it's, and everyone's super good looking and you haven't heard of any of them. Um, We're looking at you, Sleepy Hollow. So I, and it just didn't seem, it, whatever, it just didn't seem necessary. It seemed like that was, that was recoverable. And, yeah. and I would have liked the Neil Diamond counterpoint, A, if that, trope of let's trot out a classic rock song and use it in a, as an ironic counterpoint hadn't been done to death. And B, if it hadn't also happened last night on The Leftovers, oh, <laughs> when they played uh, they uh, play Lo the Love Show? Will Keep Us Together. Oh, oh, and, but <laughs> now, did Del Toro direct this? Or yeah. Directed first episode. Yeah. Directed first, and Michael Apted directed The Leftovers. Yeah. And they're practically the same like, person. And they should both do better. <laughs> yeah, right, but I mean, but, okay. right, but I mean, what, it is a, I mean, if, if you, a very simple example of the renaissance of television uh, for crying out loud. Yes. It's that's true. That that these guys 15 are years ago they have their these trade. Guys. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, it, is, it is. I feel like Guillermo del Toro only did that so that he could end the scene by cutting to a cop car going honk, honk, honk. Mm. And sweet Caroline, and then whoop, 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 and then like, oh, the cops are here. Like that was that was the only reason why he did it. I did like the really line fun. of touching me, touching you, while he was being like, yeah, with like all the covered in worms. Yeah, covered in so, worms. Like you were so pleased that he got the thing out. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh yeah, wait, oh never mind. That was yeah. a good yeah. Yeah. That's that's good yeah. <laughs> That is good <laughs> horror. I like it a lot. Do we think the show is going to be scary? Yep. Yeah. As opposed to just suspenseful. No, I think. Were you scared? But I was creeped shot, out by some stuff. Creepy, yeah. yeah that's a little, little final I, shot, but yeah, there was stuff. When the when the vampire revealed itself, it was a nice little moment. It felt like that bit and mimic where the cockroaches are under a tarp and the yeah. kids are approaching. All, that was kind of creepy and suspenseful. The actual reveal of the vampire, I didn't expect it to look like that. It creeped me out. It was gross. Yeah. There were mo all the stuff with the worms. The worms get me. I don't actually want worms digging under my skin. So when I see worms digging under skin, oh, I, I go, and Oh, I I'd do. rather <laughs> not. Thank you. So that stuff <laughs> creeped me out. I don't know. I don't know if I get really cow. I don't really get scared anymore. I get creeped out a lot yeah. more than I There's also jump scares. I mean, Guillermo relied on like the bit where the camera pushed in on the guy's, the passenger's hand, and it twitched a little bit. Yeah, right. And then the master coming out of the uh, the floor of the, the plane, which reminded me a lot of the Night Flyer, Stephen King's Night oh, yeah. Flyer, which was a vampire that traveled by plane to airport to airport. And it was excellent. And it had a coffin filled with earth. And we did an episode of a show. Yeah, well, nobody, yes. nobody in this area, nobody's it's seen it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody, yeah. Dude, it's actually yeah. good. It's, it's actually good. good. No, 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 I meant nobody in this show has no, seen yeah. it. Um, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, there'll, be, there'll be some fear, I suspect, because, you know, what are these, uh, as these people, as these now, as the undead return to their loved ones? Mm. Like, what's that, what's that little girl going to do? You know, daddy, so, daddy, I'm so yeah. cold. At yeah. some point, at some point, we're going to get some fear and some scares, legitimate when they turn on their families. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or, I think we're going to get like full on maybe zombie horde like yeah. craziness well, going on, but except vampires. There was a, there's a shot, normally I avoid this, but there was a shot in the coming up on the strain. Yeah. It was very simple, but it evoked uh, Werner Herzog's Nosferatu nice. with all the plague rats. Mm. That yeah. really emphasizing the rats and everything uh, like that. And uh, there's yeah. really, once you're milking, once you add the element of a plague, which is actually a very real thing that we worry about all the time, once you add that to the vampire mythos, then we're having a lot more fun and there's a lot more potential to really get genuinely creepy there's here. Somebody in Texas has the plague. Oh. Got the plague. Uh, and they the, should, they and, should lance that. And the bad kind. 
Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. it's in, uh, and it's a place where it's in Ohio. I'm going to get, you know what? I just don't know the state. Let's just go this there. Isn't, this isn't where they, they actually found a vial. No, they found, they found, uh, um, yes, they found. But that was smallpox. That was smallpox. Sorry. They found yeah. smallpox in a box yeah. uh, in, outside <laughs> of D.C. in an old, uh, uh, like, CDC uh, uh, storage bin. Um, no like, oh shit, look at no this. Worms. Hanging out yeah. CDC, CDC people were all out yeah. modeling somewhere. You sure wasn't so, labeled Chud? Like maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so this, but the plague was discovered caused by uh, places, it, like it's, it's rural Pennsylvania or rural Ohio, prairie dogs. Oh. Uh, prairie dogs carry the plague. Nice. Right, and so instantly I thought those they're not our dogs. Uh, <laughs> right. so, uh, so, uh, somebody, uh, somebody's uh, got us. Uh, yeah. But and so whatever, they find in smallpox yeah. and some fuckers got the plague. Yeah. Yeah. And then I read it, it turns out there's like 90 there. cases of the plague every year. Yeah. yeah. That so fear what you're saying is, is... That fear is prevalent, always. Yeah. That's always yeah. there. It's yeah. So if the strain can be more about like cool horror stuff and no more about exposition and press conferences, I think this is going to be a better show. And again, I think it's a pilot, so they got to get a lot of that out of the way. So I think there's a lot of hope. <laughs> I agree. I hope right. so. I I was, by the end, I was uh, scared and into it. So I was very much into it. Awesome.